to six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Messix here, out with Seth Gantz, one of our precision farming specialists, to show you how to calibrate a sprayer. I have a little bit of work to do. We're gonna do a short series here on going out and uh, taking a field and turning it into a finished lawn, what is essentially my front yard, believe it or not, becomes a YouTube video. And one of the things that we need to do in that process is kind of burn off all of the existing grass. Now, Seth is gonna help me go over this sprayer here and set this thing up to do it properly so that we're putting this roundup down at the right rate. Seth is a gentleman who takes care of all the technology, really gets to do all the cool toys, the cool stuff in our business. Um, gets to play with some cool stuff. So he's gonna show us the basics of how this has been done for the last number of decades. Yeah, so the first thing that you wanna do, obviously, is, r is run your sprayer. Make sure there isn't any leaks or anything like that. Uh, I have a great tool that I like to use and it's just green leaf catch basin. And this green leaf catch basin is really simple because it asks you, what's your nozzle spacing? And then what you do is catch whatever comes out of that nozzle per the nozzle spacing for that desired length of time. So today, we, this sprayer we have is 20 inch spacing, uh, which is pretty common in agricultural sprayers as well as lawn sprayers. Uh, but you also see 15 up to 30 inch spacing on sprayers. And uh, luckily they have that right on here. So for this instance today, a 20 inch spacing, we're gonna be putting this under the nozzle and catching it for 30 seconds. So when, when we came out here today, you grabbed two things when you left your desk. That container and the tape measure there yep. on the back of your hip to check that, that nozzle spacing. So these are the two things that we really need in order to get started. So the first thing we're gonna do here is catch, right? So I've got a little switch up here at the cab to turn this on. And I can watch my pressure gauge there and I'm up to 50 PSI. So you're at right at 50 PSI. So I'm gonna get my timer out here, my stopwatch, and I'm gonna put this under here. And as soon as I start to catch, I'm gonna start the timer and I'm gonna stop it at 30 seconds, so. Now while we're doing this, the rate that that's flowing right now, we were talking can change, right? As a, as a machine ages? It can. So your nozzles will wear out over time. Uh, that changes. But there's also strainers on this sprayer and that'll change too. So depending on how good of water you're putting in or whatever you're spraying is, you'll want to check those strainers too because that's going to you know, so change your flow. Strainer can plug up, nozzle can change, those things can change over time. So we're doing this periodically. Correct. Okay, so we just caught 30 seconds worth out of one nozzle. And what's great about this green leaf catch basin is once you turn it around on the back, you can see it lists miles per hour. It's in increments of two miles per hour, which makes it pretty easy. Um, and we can go right down through here. And for instance, going six miles per hour, we would at this nozzle, uh, at the pressure that Neil had stated earlier, we're gonna be spraying right around 18 gallons per acre. If we bump up to 10 miles an hour, we'll be spraying at 10 gallons per acre. So the faster you go, the less application rate, the slower you go, the more application rate, essentially, is what it comes down to. So if I wanted to go, how does pressure play into this then? Like if I wanted to drive faster, mm -hmm. since that's what I do, <laughs> and needed to put down more, I can just very simply dial the pressure up higher. You can, but not as easy as you may think it is okay. uh, because the nozzles play big into it and that's where your pressure comes back to. Uh, your, your nozzles are only rated at a certain gallon per acre okay. um, and pressure plays into that a little bit. Pressure really plays into how much atomization of the water you're going to get out of those nozzles. So okay. on a windy day, you're not going to want a higher pressure. You're going to want a lower pressure. So lower pressure gives you bigger droplet sizes. That's so correct. is that normally called out on the label then of your chemical? They usually list it on there what they want to see out of that product. Okay. Um, so like for, let's say, an insecticide or a fungicide, they want a smaller droplet size. Uh, an herbicide is a good one where they want a bigger droplet size. Okay, so we're not using pressure then in order to change our rate? Not per se. I mean, it'll change a little bit, but your rate will drastically more change when you change the nozzles. So armed with a little bit of information from Seth, we're gonna mix this thing up and come out here and spray a little bit. Now, 
You would have seen this field several times by now, but I've not entirely explained why we're here so often. This is actually my front yard. Um, many years ago, I bought a property out here with the intent to someday be able to put a home on it. And we're finally to the point that that is happening. In fact, you can hear the bulldozers here in the background doing final grade right now. So we're coming near the end of the process finally after <laughs> several months of working on this through COVID. It's been a little challenging. We're gonna go out in here and do the uh, spray some Roundup down in order to kill all the grass off here in the front before we come through, turn it all over and then reseed everything out here. I intend to do this myself, turn it into some YouTube videos for you and not get somebody else to come in and do it for me. So we're gonna start by mixing this up into the tank here. Now, Seth has helped here a little bit with the rate that we're gonna be putting this down at. So we're gonna take this and dump it into the top of the tank in the right amount. Now what we're doing here is what you would think of as round top, Roundup. The actual active ingredient in Roundup though is called glyphosate. Probably killed the pronunciation of that. This stuff bought in concentrate or from agricultural suppliers is way cheaper than buying it off the shelf at the box store um, by like many, many multitudes. Um, so if you need to do this in quantity like I do, we're gonna burn off about an acre worth of grass here today. Um, buying this from those agricultural suppliers is much more cost effective than going out and say, trying to buy Roundup Concentrate from Home Depot. Now this is obviously far from a high-end unit, but when you get into more meaningful sprayers like this, you're gonna have a lot of dials and gauges and valves and stuff on them to operate different functions. One of the things that you're gonna have here is an agitator. So what I've done here when I dump my concentrate into the top is not just go spray right away, but turn this on and run it for a couple of minutes with the agitator turned open. That allows me to direct the flow out of the pump back into a set of nozzles in the bottom of the tank that simply turn that fluid around and distribute the concentrate throughout the rest of the solution before pumping it out through the boom. Do my best to drive along here at my six miles an hour. This was one of my challenges here with doing this with the RTV. This is a machine that tends to like to go fast and uh, driving along at six miles an hour is about the slowest speed that I can actually kind of like drive at a controlled rate at. I mean, how fast would you, do you think you'd spray? How fast can I go? Well, I mean, the RTV it really goes, depends on your novel. The RTV goes 45 miles an hour. Oh man. Well, you don't want to spray 45 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be crazy. I mean, figure in this, I would think, you know, six to eight, six to eight mile an hour would be comfortable. I'd say six would probably be the best. And the other thing is you don't want to drive around with these things bouncing no, around. Right. Okay. In an agricultural setting, you're usually going to have something that tells you your, your, pat, your width as you go back and forth here. So I don't have any kind of foam marker or GPS to tell me where I've been. So I'm kind of very crudely watching the end of my, uh, my tire mark there. I could have easily chosen to set this up on the back of my tractor as well with a three-point hitch version. The reason I chose to do it on the RTV is because of the transport speed that I have with this. Being able to have it in the back of the RTV where I could drive pretty quickly up or down the road to get to a different areas I need to take care of or if I've got a fence line or something to take care of, they've got a spot sprayer. It just makes it a little bit more convenient for that reason. So another plus for doing this with the RTV over a tractor maybe would be the suspension that I have. So this area right here is still not graded at all. It's really torn up and to drive through these ruts and stuff with my tractor would be a bit of a ride. Fortunately on this, you know, you have a machine with suspension that rides a little bit better. And so hopping back and forth over these rough areas isn't such a big deal. So another thing that I like for the sprayer right here is this hand wand. So I've got several places in the back here where I keep having problems with poison ivy and goodness, I've sprayed this stuff several times now, but with this big tank here, I can just drive around. And treat this, they gotta remember, I'm carrying a lot of water here, right? So when you see a stream like this, this isn't like, you're shooting Roundup from a commercial container. So the proportions are a little bit different, but the active ingredient's the same. 
Definitely have a group of people out there that gets concerned when they see agricultural chemicals going down. We would see from the agricultural space, the perspective among any of us would be that, you know, people who are out in their lawns with this kind of stuff, just dumping stuff on in excess because they don't understand proper application rates and that kind of stuff, are potentially doing a lot more harm than what a farmer may be that's putting down precise amounts of this stuff in very limited quantities. And when I say limited, I mean limited. When you look at where I'm going back and forth here, even with the rate that I'm putting this down, which would be about 25 gallons an acre, um, there's only little droplets and stuff that are down on each area. It's not like I'm even going around with a hand wand and sprayed stuff down at all. It's just the right amount that's needed in order to get the job done and kill this stuff off. So this, if you have your cool container here, it's pretty easy to figure out. Very. If you were setting this up on a modern piece of equipment, the stuff that you got, you don't do this anymore, Not right? really. Not really. No. How, how is this done on modern machinery? So on modern machinery with a flow meter and a control valve, which this sprayer doesn't have, um, with a GPS, I would pretty much just push a button. Push a button? Yeah, and let it calibrate. So what it does is the machine will, will pick up its speed, it'll bring it down, bring it up, bring it down, and it ju adjusts and figures out what that flow is. Now I have to put the width in okay. and how many nozzles are on that boom. And then the computer really does So you're taking a GPS monitor, the monitor's figuring out its own flow rate yep. based upon the number of nozzles. Right. And then you just drive. Exactly. <laughs> you just drive. Yeah, it figures it out itself. After you put all that user input information in, yeah. it takes all of that, computes it together, and that's what it uses as it's, as it's... And you're giving it as an input since the computer doesn't know what chemical you've put in the tank. So your inputs are what? Just your gallons per acre that you need to put down? Right. So before you load the sprayer, you're obviously going to figure out, I have a 1,200 gallon sprayer and I'm going to do, my application rate is going to be 15 gallons. And then you put your chemical in and you, you know, put your chemical in per that okay. is how that's figured out. And this is one 15 foot boom yep. driven off of one pump. Yes. What, what is typical anymore? How many sections or nozzles or how, what's a, what does your average sprayer look like anymore? Well, that's, that's a good question. I mean, it really depends on if you're going to a pool type sprayer or if you're going to go to a self-propelled. Uh, our most common pool type um, setup is 60 foot booms. There's some guys out there still running 45. You know, on the East Coast here, we, we farm garden patches. We don't farm big, <laughs> we don't farm big fields. Uh, but so that's a pool type, 60, 45s. Uh, some guys will go up to 90s on pool types, maybe on some flatter ground along the Eastern Shore. Uh, now, self-propelled machines, 90, the whole way up to 120 is the most common, but you can go the whole way up to 135 feet um, on self-propelled. It's a lot of boom. It is. <laughs> most guys run 15 inch centers. Uh, like I said, 20 is somewhat common and 30 is still somewhat common on older sprayers, but guys are buying new sprayers nowadays are all going to 15. So a little bit of a shameless plug. Uh, all this stuff is stuff that we sell and you will find in our stores. So these little green leaf containers right here with your catch rates and stuff on them. I'll stick a link down in the description to these if you'd like to pick this up online. Probably not something you're gonna find in every store you walk into. This is an IVA sprayer here in the back of my RTV, a cool locally made company here that does these things. Uh, it comes out with a really cost-effective sprayer with some high quality components. When you look across here you'll find T-Jet nozzles, uh, Parker hoses, uh, nice quality spray runs and reels, a good commercial pump down there. Stuff that's actually made to last and do some of this light commercial work even with a tiny little 15 foot unit like this. So, going to be able to help you with a lot of much, much bigger and more expensive things than this, but even stuff down to this size is stuff that our guys are able to help you with. So that's a little bit on setting up this sprayer to go out and burn off my grass, <laughs> getting my own work done here. But at the same time, hopefully give you a little bit of appreciation on how to calibrate a sprayer, kind of understanding the, the processes that you go through and understanding a little bit of the knowledge that guys like Seth have. When you're going out and you're doing this on a commercial scale, like many of our customers do, these chemicals are really expensive. You want to be putting as little of them down on the ground as possible. And guys like Seth have the knowledge to go through and help you figure out how to do that kind of stuff to make you as profitable and as productive as possible. So thank you for that. If you have any needs for equipment or parts of service we can help with, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. Neil from Messick's here out the...
Yeah, that didn't go long, did it? <laughs> Guys are buying new sprayers nowadays, they're all going to 15s. So a 15 foot boom going 10 miles an hour. I was gonna make a joke and I totally lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. Cut. <laughs>